Hello and welcome back. We are onward and upward in chapter 3 and we're starting with measures of variation. Now, the last couple sections have dealt with the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. And uh, that's central, you know, central tendency of data. But that doesn't tell us the whole story about how the data is distributed. And that's what this next section is about, is to be able to describe the data using measures of variation such as range, variance, and standard deviation. The good thing is you already know what range is about. So here's two paint brands. They've got brand A and brand B. And um, they have tested them to see how uh, long they last. So the lab makes six gallons of each brand to test. The two groups constitute two small populations. The results are in months, and they're shown over here. Now, the, if, when you calculate the mean, so we add all these up and divide by the number of numbers, we end up with 35 for brand A and 35 for brand B. So you'd say, well, they're about the same. But when you look at the data and how it's distributed, um, so since they're equal, you might conclude that both brands of paint last equally long. But if you look at the data values and the spread of variation, how the data spread apart, it's a very different story. So if you look here, here's brand A. Look how you have such differences as to how long the paint could last. It could last 60 months or it could only last 10. So five years as opposed to less than a year is quite a variation. If you look at brand B, though, they're all clustered around the, the mean. And so that's what the standard deviation in that tests for, is to see how close your data is around that mean. So for the spread of variability of a data set, there are three commonly me common measures used range, variance, and standard deviation. Range you're already familiar with. That's just the highest minus the lowest. So the symbol for that is R, and it equals the highest value minus the lowest value. So let's look here. We're going to get with example 3-19, find the ranges. Well, if I do the high minus the low for brand A, that's going to be 60 minus 10. That's 50 months. And for brand B, 45 minus 25, 20 months. Notice the brand A, the one that's more varied, has a bigger range than brand B. So the range for brand B shows that 50 months separate the largest data value from the smallest. Range B, brand B shows 25 months separates the largest value from the smallest. So if we look here, one extremely high or low data value, that's called an outlier. I always want to say like, do, 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 when I see outlier. Um, can affect the range markedly, as shown in the next example. So those do, and as you, if you remember the activity with teacher salaries, you had that one really big value that really does affect your data. So here's the salaries of the XYZ manufacturing company. I wonder if they make zippers. Um, the owner is 100,000, and the worker bee down here, one of the worker bees, is 18,000. This should say 15,000, not a decimal there. So you can see there's a big range in the salary. So if we take, it actually should be 15000 here. That's a typo. And you know, I'm the one who did that. So it should say 100000 minus 15000 equals 85000 Since the owner's salary is included in the data, the range is a large number. A more meaningful statistic to measure the variability would be the variance and the standard deviation. And uh, one thing I want to warn or deviation is just like the mean. It's one more decimal place than that of the original data. So let's get started. Find the variance and standard deviation for this data set. Now they're going to show you one method, and then we're going to do another one for the other brand, the brand B paint. And the other method I like better because it has um, a table. And to me, it's easier to do the table where you're doing everything to one column, and it makes sense. So step one, you have to find the mean of the data. And notice they use the little mu symbol, because this is all of the brands they tested. So they add them all up and divide by 6. So you get 210 divided by 6, which we already know is 35. Here's the new part. Step two, subtract the mean value from each of data. So these are the data items, and they're subtracting 35 from each of them. So you get negative 25, 25, 15, negative 5, 5, and negative 15. So all we did was we subtracted the mean, which was 35, from each data item. Then step three, we're going to square each result. Pretend the step five isn't already up there. So we're going to square each result, and 
It ends in 5. 2 times 3 is 6, so this is 625. 625 ends in 5, so the square will end in 25. 1 times 2 is 2, so that's 225. 25, 25, 225. Step 4, find the sum of the squares. So we're going to add all these up. So this is the symbol for summing all these up. And doesn't that look horrible? But it's not. It's just saying it's the data item minus your mean squared, and then you add them up. That's what the sum means. So it's 1750. Then you're going to divide the sum by n. How many data items there were? There were six to get the variance. And it's this little kind of half fish, oops, it's this kind of half fish thing squared. So 1750 divided by 6 is 41.7. So that's the variance. So to get the standard deviation, what's nice is once you have the variance, all you have to do is take the square root to get the standard deviation. So this little guy squared is uh, 291.7, that's the variation. Standard deviation is going to be the square root of that, which is 17.1. So there's your standard deviation. Hence, 17.1 is the standard deviation. It's kind of how far the things are from the mean. Let's take a look at doing it with a table. It's often helpful to make a table. So we are going to use this. It looks like they're doing the same one over again, but you can see how the table thing works. So here's my data items. I know my mean was 35. So I'm going to take and subtract each of the values and for, uh, 35 from each of the values. So we had those before and we end up with 1750. And then here is the formula for variance down here. X minus mu squared over N, 291, which we just did. This is just showing you tables, I think, are very helpful with organizing the data. I like them better because I know I'm going to be using the, these totals in that. Here's the definition for variance. The average of the squares of the distance each value is from the mean. Deviation, here's the definition. Square root of the variance, the symbol for standard deviation is this little half fish. I don't even know what you call it. I should know, but I don't. Corresponding value for the population of standard deviation is this guy. Square root of this whole thing. And doesn't it look complicated? But now you know it's not really that complicated. So let's do the standard deviation for our brand B. So here's our values, 35, 45, 30, 35, 40. We're going to subtract the mean, which we already know was 35, from each of these. So you end up with 0 here, 10 here, negative 5, 0, negative, uh, or 5, sorry, and then negative 10. And if you add those, notice that this column would add to 0. This is why they square it so that you don't get 0 there. So we get 0. 100, 25, 0, 25, and 100. So you've got these guys, you're going to add them all up. So that's, we're down here to step four, find the sum of the column C. We add them up and we get 250. And then we're dividing by the number in our data set. So there's six of them. So we get 250 over 6, which gives us 41.7 for the variance take the square root of it and you get 6.5. That's a much smaller number than the other one, than brand A. So the, since the standard deviation of brand A is 17.1 and brand B is 6.5, the data is more variable for brand A. You could also say this brand B, it's more clustered around the mean. So that's what they use standard deviation for. In summary, when the means are equal, the larger the variance or standard deviation. In summary, when the means are equal, the larger the variance or standard deviation is, the more the variable, more variable the data are. So now we're on to calculating these for a sample, and it has a slightly different formula, but um, it's it's called the best estimate when the population is large and the sample is small, and it's found by dividing by n minus one instead of n. And here's s squared. That's how they denote variance for finding the this thing. So we're going to end up with x. That's your data values minus the mean. That's the same thing that we've been doing. It just has a different symbol. X is the individual data item, and this x with a hat on it is the sample mean and is the sample size. Standard deviation is found the same way. We just take the square root of the variance. So that's it. What are the shortcut formulas? So here they are. Ooh, don't those look crazy? On this one, they square each data item and add them up. 
And this one, they add up all the data items and data values and then square them and divide by n. So that's what this is saying down here. Note that the sum of x squared means to square the values and then add. If they put parentheses around it, you add them all up and then square them. So the standard deviation, I mean, right over here, they take the square root of it. Now, if you were just looking at this, I mean, you'd say, holy cannoli, that's crazy. That's my math nightmare. But now you know this is just means add up stuff. All right, so let's take a look at this one. Find the sample variance for the amount of European auto uh, sales. And they're going to use the shortcut formula here. So they take all of that data values and they just add them up. So they get the sum is 75.6. Then they square each of these and then add them. That's 958.94. And then we're substituting them in the formula. So this, the sum of x squared, that means square first and add up, is 958.94. This one is the sum of the x's that comes right from here, 75.6. And we're going to have to square that and then divide by 6. 6 is the number in our data set. So we'd have 6 minus 1 there. So you hit 6.38 over 5. The variance of the sample is 1.28. Then you take the square root of that puppy and you got your standard deviation, 1.13. So that's actually a very good standard deviation. It's All right, procedure for finding variance and standard deviation for group data is similar. Uh, then the mean, if you remember your frequency distribution charts and finding the midpoints and so on like that, you're going to do the midpoints again to do this. So here's the, the table for the runner's times. Boy, I only run and somebody's chasing me. Here's your frequency for the number of miles that they've done in a week. And you're going to find the midpoint of your class. So you add these two and divide by two. So that's going to be 16 over 2. That gives me 8. So this is 38 down here. And then you take the frequency times the midpoint. That's just what you guys did on the last quiz. Uh, so you got 8. You got Now, this is frequency times the x squared. So you got to square this guy first. So 8 squared is 64. And then multiply by 1. So you end up with 64. This is 169 times 2. 338. This is 324. Those guys. Now let's add them up. So here's the numbers that we have the number of, of uh, data values. Here's the sum of the frequency times the midpoint. Here's the sum of the frequency times the midpoint squared. All right, now we're ready to plug and chug. That is the main thing. These values are the ones we're going to use in the formula. There's the sum of this guy. There's the sum of this guy. So just like your variables like A, B, and C, these long honk and ugly things are just something somewhere you're going to plug a number. So if I look at this guy, the frequency times x squared of the midpoint, the square of the midpoint, is coming from this guy. So he's going to be the first one in our formula, 13, 3, 10. Then this one goes with this total. So that's where this guy comes from. He's going to go in place of that one. So that's 490. And then ends in our data item. You got one there and one there. That's where the 20 goes. So we're going to put a 20 over here and a 20 over here. All righty. Then you just plug it in your calculator. Oh, I love the calculator. So 68.7, there's my variance. All right. Take the square root, get my standard deviation as 8.3. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, we're to the very end, and this is also in your book. Here's our measure of variation. Just to sum up, the range is the distance between the highest and the lowest, and the, the symbol is R. The variance is the average of the squares of the distance that each value is from the mean. That's these two symbols, this little fishy guy. And a squared standard deviation is just the square root of the variance, which is just the fish and S. All right. What are the uses of variance and standard deviation? Well, the sum up can be used to determine the spread of the data. If it's large, it's more dispersed. And you can also compare two sets of data. It's also used to determine consistency of a variable. For example, if you're manufacturing nuts and bolts, the variation of diameters has to be smaller. Those things aren't going to fit together. Used to determine the number of data values that fall within a specific interval of distribution. And it's often used in inferential statistics. There we go. Have a good day, and I will see you soon.